Heavy metal? We don't need heavy metal. Learn to paint the skeleton guard like this. How's the breeze blowing my happy little trees? This video you are watching follows this introduction with a discussion of how and when this style is superior, followed by a brief planning of what sort of goals and signposts we want to hit, and then the 800-pound gorilla, a coat-by-coat -coat document of how these models were brought to life into the way you're now seeing them. Don't forget to smash that social and like that share button, because if you're not subscribed, you might miss it. You wouldn't want to miss out, would you? You see, I think back in 2020, I was plowing through these little fellers in maybe an hour or two a night with TV and podcasts in the background. Their counterparts though from the same collection probably took about nine or twelve hours to paint a squad of three but it's painted with basically the same sort of brush strokes how'd that happen this one is real small and probably took about four hours maybe all right and obviously this fella this one er pretty quick too so why are these dead things so quick and the living ones so slow, even though the dead ones have these immaculate, beautiful transitions? I think the problem is borders and details. It's all the borders and details. I think that the need to come back and pick out tiny borders and tiny details and have more than one big sort of material on the model is where that time's going. So looking at these sprues, there are numerous details, numerous textures, numerous materials we could pick out on these. We could go nuts and go wild, but I think we're going to stick to just two really eye-catchy, showcasey ones. Can't be the wood on the weapons. Probably shouldn't be the bones, since these are, these are going to draw the attention to the cloaks that cover them. And if it's just the wood and the and the weapons are all simple, that's going to draw. Hey, why don't we pick out the cloaks? I really love how that cloak on this night goblin came out. Might have done him before these or after these. And I really have like one non-metallic metal recipe I like. It's this one. I liked it so much. I uploaded a 45 minute YouTube video that I'm not showing anyone. So if we go in, we pick out and just put some real effort into those cloaks and those weapon halves, what's that going to leave? It's going to leave some furs on a few of them. It's going to leave the wood halves of the equipment. It's going to leave like the backs of the shields. You know, we can do all those with a quick wash of shade. And then if we've done everything else with a dry brush, why? We can come back in and pick out the bases with a different shade. You know, instead of something like this, we'll get, you know, a little, we'll get a little visually striking gal like this. So, uh, yeah, let's go skip to it, eh? Like badly cooked meat or good evening wear, this project started off with an all-black primer just to get everything off to a solid start. So I would usually start any model like this off by dry brushing an off-white. Here, I use steel gray. Steel gray isn't really an off-white. It's much more a bluish gray. If I just left the skeleton black or just done it with one layer of dry brushing, I'm convinced that it would be obvious and it would detract from the viewer's ability to appreciate the few bits I did do nice, and it would be horrible, and everyone would dislike it, and let's get on to Glacier Blue. Glacier Blue is my usual off-white alternative to Korax White. However, I'm only highlighting areas that would be hit with the Zenithal Prime. Here I'm using this to quickly highlight the areas that the Zenithal Highlight already hit. I want to give the models a full shade, mid-tone, and highlight 
triumvirate so that the areas that aren't otherwise attended to remain attractive. I also want to remember to do something light and thin and neutral so that the later stages don't have anything to overcome in that I can just throw some wash or shade on areas that I think need to be colored again for it to look right, but that aren't really interesting to me. I'm still working through a very knackered bottle of charcoal brown from around 15 years ago. I did buy a replacement. I, I mean, I guess I could throw it out, but... Anyway, I would say that with this, I did a nice solid base coat. Well, not a solid base coat, a nice all over base coat, even base coat. Um, some places it shows through, it, which is fine. I mean, that's sort of half the goal of underpainting. You probably won't notice. I could do a, another, I could have done another coat and gotten it solid and flat, but I do kind of like the contrasting areas, contrasting colors. I think the, the consistency that the old paint and whatever I've used to rejuvenate it, but the consistency it's at is fine for this, but it's not as thick as a new fresh from the pot cold one from Games Workshop would be. But I really, I did try to make this the sort of shade color, the base color, the dark color for this non-metallic metal step approach that I'm, that I'm carrying out now. Heavy Gold Brown is a wondrous shade, a wonderful paint, and here I'm using it as sort of a glaze. If you're going competitive, you'd want something with a smoother gradient and a more dramatic beginning and stop. I think that's called contrast. You'd want more dramatic contrast on your gradient. But for here, I'm just using it as sort of the opposite of an acrylic wash, as a opaque sort of half covering that only goes to protruding areas, as opposed to a transparent half covering that goes to recessed areas. But this is just, I think this is just the paint mixed with water. It might be mixed with glaze medium. And I'm just pulling the thickness towards the edges of these things because I want them to be brighter. I want the edges to be brighter because that's how light would reflect. That's how light's going to reflect. Why don't we just cut through these next few steps of non-metallic metal real fast? Didn't actually record them because I did the painting at a friend's house and, you know, we were, we were talking about tacos or something. <laughs> So I use gold yellow, a very rich yellow, to make another glaze, even thinner than the heavy gold brown, even more towards the edges. Okay, so Agrax Earthshade, once again, strikes as out of print, out of production. There's some new Agrax Earthshade. So you should subscribe and like so that we get all the monies and I can spend more time on minis, and then I can come back and tell you how the replacement works. I think Tammy would be the one to look at for differences between old paints and new paints. Anyway, so washes have this wonderful habit of unifying the previous layers while also dulling them down. I applied the Agrax Earthshade to all the halves and other wood things on the equipment so that they wouldn't look quite the same as everything else. But I believe I forgot to do any special recording or note of that in hell. Oh, hell, I also used moon yellow here. Why don't you comment with whether you think I did or should have used the moon yellow before or after the Agrax Earth shade? Now, I think next time I do this, I will use this moon yellow afterwards. The moon yellow, it's a very pale yellow. But I think that it was done as a full large edge highlight after the wash with the moon yellow to, to just sort of bring back up those tips and the edges of the weapons. Before, the final stage of this non-metallic metal recipe is edge highlights for the tips, for the intersections, for all the sharp bits with white. This is really where this shine shows. This is great, this is wonderful, and I got this done well. My friend's husband was grumbling that he was preparing tacos, so we 
we then we we then add tacos. Look, if you want to know why there weren't that many pictures, it was because there were homemade tacos with homemade blue tortillas, and that's not something you get a lot of in England. I've started on the base. I've just thickly coated it in Coelia Green Shade, which plays off of the previous dry brushing steps quite nicely. Basically looks done. So I'm gonna move on to the cloaks. Heavy Purple is another one of those Vallejo extra opaque game colors that was designed to replace the Citadel foundation colors after Games Workshop decided that was a bad brand name. The Heavy Purple is this wonderful shade of purple. It looks good and it mostly obscures all that delicate and precise dry brushing. And that's fine. But I've still just sort of layered this on. I've gone to the edges of the areas. I haven't left any of the knuckle-dragging coloration on show, really? Yeah, well, some of it hints. It's a smooth coat. It's an even coat. It's not two thin coats, because we don't need the solid, uniform opa opacity of two thin coats. We, we, just, we just want this thing to definitely be purple and not gray. I think it's definitely purple and not gray. Don't you? And there we have it. Warlick Tongue Shade was the quickest layer, the quickest one to go on. Just a lick of paint across the highlights and raised areas. Now this one wasn't applied all, all over. It was just layered across the extruding, extending, exquisite layers that we wish to highlight. It made it pretty. It done so that it make it prettier. More purple, good color, more zazz, zazz, bright. A lot of these models have shields. You know what color would be good on shields? I used the pot of Karoberg Crimson Wash or Shade that came with the Mortal Realms magazine. You can follow my progress on the Mortal Realms magazine if you poke on through to my personal website, I think. But the... It was... It was... I'm a real goblin with lots of paints. I just chose this one on a whim and it fits super well. So yeah, I could, I could, I could, I could, I could, I could move on. Moving on, moving on. So the final sort of main step, I think, you know, the new sort of thing, the final new thing was to crack open this pot of something called Hellion Green, a Citadel dry paint that is the last dead color I'm gonna bring up. It's a verdigris shade, it's a verdigris dry paint. So I'm not sure why they got rid of it. I used this mostly to give the bases a little more umph. And then I realized the raised details on the Warden's shield would look really good with this. Also at this point, and in these pictures, I sort of glazed steel gray over the larger stones and such on the bases to bring them out. I think I just sort of started this with the tombstone and then realized there were a lot of little stones that could look a little bit better. Oh, and also the fur. I put a uh, cold gray, another game color color on the on the on the furs. And then once that dried, I went on to to the next stage, the last stage. Okay, so I'm doing Agrax Earth shade to shade the furs, and then I lined the rims with a uh, solid black and then I used a gloss varnish on the rims because the carrying cases that I use and I hope I remember to link um, tend to grip the rim and chip the paint on it more than I would like but otherwise the carrying cases are wonderful and lovely and I think everyone should go support the artist and nag him to make uh, more carrying cases nag him to make cursed city carrying cases that would be the thing anyway uh, as I'm recording this video, these models are done. 
That's how I painted these. That's how the sort of thought process that went through doing this. I thought, I'll do the dry brushing things so that I've got something basic to work with, and then I'll see, yeah, yeah, I like how this non-metallic metal works. And then, yeah, yeah, I like this purple, and I'm not going to jump the gun with the blue, and... I, I'm just going to leave it there, I'm going to be done. And if it wasn't for the necessity of demonstrating all this through the medium of YouTube, I probably would have, they'd probably now be sitting in the back of my, of my cabinet, never to be touched again, because like certain other people, I consider the painting of the models much more interesting than learning to play various games. Games are like a show a parade a formation to show off your painted minis if you enjoyed that more than warhammer tv videos and more than video games being used to treat lazy eye you should contact warhammer tv and get them to dig my application out of the trash can if you don't care about any of this silliness and really just want some more hobby goodness stuff we have a channel. It's full of stuff. In any case, you should subscribe and add our own flavor of spices to your YouTube algorithmically generated soup. And I'll see you next time.